morning and welcome. It's 11 a.m. here in Singapore, 8.30 in India and 7 a.m. in Dubai. And you're with us live, the latest webinar brought to you by Logisim. Global supply chains explore new opportunities with increased visibility. My name is Bob Gill, General Manager, Southeast Asia at ARC Advisory, Advisory Group. And I'm really happy to welcome my co-host today, Dr. Ramon Krishnan, President of the Logistics and Supply Chain Management Society and editor-at-large, Logisim magazine. So now more than ever, technology is making all the difference in keeping supply chains afloat. And in this session, we're going to explore how visibility provides more opportunities and also save costs in supply chains, in global supply chains. So our two guests this morning who will help us to uh, navigate this very current issue are Husseini Vora. And Hussein is Vice President, Asia Pacific, business development at technology company Ocean Insights. And Mohammed Ismail, who is corporate logistics manager and Dubai site leader at food company Goody. So perhaps to kick things off, um, Husseini and uh, Ismail, perhaps you could tell us more about your respective roles at Ocean Insights and Goody, and also about what your companies do. So Husseini. Very good morning to all our viewers, and uh, thanks Bob and Raymond for uh, having me here. Uh, uh, I, I'm heading uh, Ocean Insights uh, Asia Pacific region, and um, as you said, Ocean Insight is a German technology company. We are into ocean freight visibility uh, predominantly, and um, six years with Ocean Insights, and um, I think a lot of great experiences with big shippers, uh, top global forwarders, and NVOs to understand their, uh, you know, great pain points from the visibility perspective, uh, and and I hope to share uh, some of those today, and and I hope to I hope that makes some uh, value to our audience. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, and Ismail. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone, for having me here with you. It's a real pleasure. Um, to talk about a very interesting topic and to uh, also uh, get the chance to share more about Goody and how we were able to partner with uh, Ocean Insight and use their uh, amazing platform to uh, navigate through very rough waters as what I would call for uh, Corona and COVID-19. So just uh, so you would understand um, how complicated uh, the operations and supply chain of uh, Goody. Um, I'll give you a brief about myself first. So I'm uh, Mohamed Ismail. I'm the corporate logistics manager and the site leader. And um, uh, I take care of the global logistics. Uh, Goody is a Saudi company, started in 1969. Uh, we have uh, what we call as a purpose to empower people, regardless of who are the people are whether they're employees, our consumers, or even our suppliers and partners. And that's our purpose in everything we do. We have 420 SKUs across 15 categories. Five of those categories, we are the market leader in Saudi. We're the absolute number one. And uh, in uh, some of these categories, we even exceed 60% of market share. We have more than 75 pickup locations. And these pickup locations are uh, in 24 different countries across five continents. We are present in 10 different countries across uh, three different uh, continents. Uh, today's volumes, we, uh, we, ha we sell around 14 million cartons a year. Uh, we transport those in uh, around 15,000 TUs, out of which 10,000 are by ocean. And uh, you can have a look at our picture, just giving you a rough idea about the range of products that we have. Um, pastas, mayonnaise, peanut butter, and, and such. So yeah, that's all from my side, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that introduction. So this topic of visibility. Um, so why is visibility necessary or even critical in the world of ocean freight? Um, maybe Hussein, you want to have a look at that first? Sure, I think uh, that, that's an interesting question to start with. Um, I think two perspectives. Uh, perspective number one, 
uh, if you compare ocean freight with other modes of transport, uh, uh, that's the mode more uh, susceptible to uh, you know problems, uh, longer transit times, and a lot of odds against the, this industry. You know, ever increasing demand due to globalization, and you have those recent disruptions like like trade wars or uh, pandemic, and and th that easily makes you lose side of your supply chain and i think you that's the last thing that you can afford to to do so definitely from that perspective uh, if you are shipping your goods through ocean you you definitely uh, need visibility and i think the other more important and equally important uh, perspective is uh, the strategic aspect i see uh, visibility providing uh, uh, you know, it, it is basically is at the heart of making a lot of uh, critical supply chain decisions. So, so for an example, can I answer these questions? Hey, uh, 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 am I able to accurately uh, help my customers with the, uh, uh, the, the correct arrival time? Or am I able to, uh, you know, uh, judge my performance index with the industry benchmark? Or, hey, am I able to optimize my warehouse uh, uh, space, uh, working capital investment, or am I able to uh, optimize my freight span? If you want to answer these questions, I think you need a lot of important information. And visibility is, is a building block that provides you that right set of information that helps you make the right decision. So I think from operational perspective and, and both uh, a strategic perspective, uh, uh, visibility is, is definitely there. I think you you got you got to go for it. You have no option. Right. Okay. No option. Um, Ismail. Well, uh, um, to be quite honest, uh, visibility uh, again, <laughs> building on what uh, Hussein just said, it's it's a it's a no it's a, it's not an option. It's a, it's a no brainer. It's something that you require. Um, today. Uh, working without the correct visibility on your supply chain is just like uh, crossing the highway uh, where you cannot see what's in front of you. And, uh, and, and there are different ways where visibility uh, contributes to the supply chain, uh, where I categorize them as the top line and bottom line. So uh, it, having that visibility helps us to avoid potentially lost sales. So we are able to react in, in different ways into uh, capitalizing on the sales that we know we can do so we don't go out of stock uh, by moving the products and making the right decisions at the right time and which brings me again to the second uh, point which is the agility in the decisions itself so you uh, have the the when you when you have that visibility you know what kind of decisions you have on on the table and and you can very quickly get this data uh, and make the right decision. Um, one of the other things that visibility helped us specifically as uh, Goody was it really helped us in the supply chain planning part. So we were able to reduce inventory because we started having much more accurate readings on the transit times and other supply chain parameters that I will be talking about in, in a minute. But generally, when, when you have that visibility, you know the real data uh, without any noise or any error that might come from uh, unrelated parts of the supply chain. Uh, second thing is uh, what really helped us is the better ordering consistency. So uh, once uh, an, an, uh, something unusual happens in the supply chain, we can immediately uh, place an order instead of waiting where it's too late and then place a very high order. So this creates a bullwhip effect across the supply chain. So having that visibility from the first day, and we, again, we'll be talking about uh, incident uh, features in uh, Ocean Insight, but for now, I can mm -hmm. tell you it helps us to avoid that from happening. And obviously, so all of the top line would be considered as an indirect cost, things that today we pay, but we don't realize that we're paying them. Uh, the, the more obvious part is the bottom line, what really comes into our PNL and what we can see on direct costs, such as damage and detention. We'll be talking about more about it, but obviously when you have that visibility, you know that a certain container is in a port, so you need to take it out. And same thing for detention, when you need to return the containers back to shipping line and you don't have that visibility, 
or you might need a, a very complex tracking and costly and can cost you a lot of uh, headcount, which is again goes back to the top line. Hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. So I think we've established that visibility is important or even not an option uh, for, for ocean freight. Um, but for this uh, next question, I'm going to come to you, Husseini. So how does technology help to deliver the level of visibility we're looking for uh, when it comes to ocean freight? Sure. I think uh, before we get into uh, answering that question, how does a technology can help, uh, it's very important to understand uh, uh, the, the challenges, the problem that industry is up against today. And, and from my perspective, the, the number one challenge is the availability of those uh, clean and reliable data. Uh, if the technology is able to provide you the, the most cleanest and the most uh, reliable form of data, then I think the job is done. You are able to put a check mark on uh, many uh, wish list items, yeah. So it's pretty important that you apply simple technology, make sure these data are available uh, to the right people within the organization, and and that's the key. And and once I mean that's what exactly Ocean Insight did, uh, ensured that data coming in from not just sources, from also third party neutral data sources, it made sure data are unified. And, and, and ensure that uh, at least, uh, you know, the users uh, understand and know uh, and receive the data that, that they need. And, and I think eventually, uh, once you stabilize the data quality, once you have the data that you need, you can, uh, you know, top it up with a lot of uh, other technologies. So you can talk about, hey, uh, uh, let's have a software uh, layer to generate exceptions alert the right users and inform them about those exceptions and deviations, or you put those uh, prediction models that helps your users to, to see in an uh, early part of the journey, hey, you know, this deviations can happen or that can go wrong, or you put your, your BI models into perspective and, and run those very deep data analytics, understand the trend of your business. So yeah, I mean, there are n number of technologies that you can apply. And technology enablement is definitely helping in this space. Uh, I mean, but it is also important to, uh, to, to think about whether I want to go really high tech or the simple technologies can still do my job, yeah? So for okay. an example, I, I personally worked uh, when I, uh, at Ocean Insight with one of the largest FMCT companies. And when they came up with their big list of problems in the visibility, they thought they can, they, they, they must have a very high tech technology to solve all those problems. And then we did a very quick POC for four weeks and, and we, we, we did simple things. We stick to basic, provided all the data that were needed and, and the most cleanest form and timely. And, and they were amazed to see that they were able to like, again, put a check mark on lots of items that they have in their wish list. So, so idea is definitely use the technology, uh, make sure that you know what you should know and, and proactively design your business processes around that technology. And that's the key. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So extending on your, on your answer there, um, we know that detention to marriage are, are key issues for shippers. So how does your technology at Ocean Insights help to manage uh, D&D issues? I think I think D and D is is definitely those uh, critical challenges that industry is up against, and um, uh, if you see, I think uh, we hear from our customers like easily twenty percent, thirty percent, or even fifty percent of their spend goes to these penalties, and sometimes they really feel helpless and they just accept those penalties, you know, and and they see no no uh, no way out of it. So uh, at Ocean Insights, I think uh, the technology is again pretty simple, channeling the uh, right information to the right people within the organization and providing those information on time uh, to enable them to take those proactive measures to, to in the first place, avoid um, those issues. So uh, I think you can see on screen, this is an exceptional uh, exception alert dashboard. It is a customizable. So every individual user 
can customize his or own uh, her own exception. So, for example, uh, Ismail has his own uh, customized dashboard that tells him, hey, if my container is at the Dubai port for three days, alert me, or five days, alert me again, or 10 days, alert me again, because he knows he has 14 free days. So that helps you proactively uh, take some actions to, to ensure the, the, these detentions and demerge are being avoided in the first place. So I think that's perspective number one, the, the idea number one. Um, the other slides, I think we can go to next slide and see uh, some live dashboards. Uh, this gives you an idea about, it's a, it's a bird's eye view of all your containers across the world in different destination terminals or the next slide where you can see containers are cleared from the port and the empty equipments are not returned. So all these uh, uh, tools are at your hand that, that makes you very proactive and you, you know what action you need to take because it highlights where you need to take an action. Uh, that's very proactive approach. And then the another approach is uh, using the historical trends to understand hey, how many free days uh, I would need uh, to avoid the demerge and detention and optimize those. Or maybe using these historical data to, to uh, validate these claims, or even sometimes you can go and often challenge uh, uh, these claims. Uh, Ismail is working at, 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 at the ground zero, and I think maybe he can also talk about this. So our, our perspective or our idea is two-pronged approach. Try to avoid the, the demerge and detention uh, even before it occurs. And if for some reason it occurs, you should have a data uh, and information that you can help to either validate challenge or learn from it in the, in the, in the future. So the next time when you go for tendering, you know uh, what can help to reduce those, those demerge and detention charges. Uh, that, that's my take on this. Yeah. Thanks, Husseini. So um, Ismail, following, oh, following from what Husseini just said, you're at ground zero. Do you have an example to share with us how you've used that technology to help your business and your operations to avoid detention and demerge and also provide that sort of visibility? Absolutely. I've got uh, tons of uh, examples, but for the sake of time, I'll be just sharing a few. All right. So back to what we were just talking about top line and bottom line, how it affects the PNL on the top line. Uh, uh, we can see the two extremes here. We can on the bottom line, save some costs. How do we save these costs? So it's with a click of a button, you can easily identify any overstaying containers in port. So uh, today, a company like Goody, we have at any time more than 100 containers uh, at, uh, at any one of our ports. And uh, it becomes very difficult to uh, build it, uh, you know, on, on uh, uh, you know, you need to make it uh, human error proof. Uh, so with a click of a button, you can simply see any container that stays, uh, as Hussaini just shared, five days. So uh, we put different thresholds. So what we call as a moderate alert, a high alert, and a critical alert. So once uh, a container reaches that moderate alert, it's in my radar automatically, and I it start to uh, question why is this container still in port after five days. So I know on average it should be out by five days. Then we keep on monitoring it, but again, after two other days, I, I, I realize that the problem is not solved. So I can, the, the best thing is that it drives actionable data. And this is the most important thing from visibility. It's not just about uh, sharing data or, or giving numbers, it's about actionable data. And it couldn't be more actionable than it is today. Uh, we also realized something that was happening during uh, COVID, uh, and uh, this is one thing that we'll be talking about later, but uh, generally, uh, when, when, when you're in a supply chain, you're working with a lot of entities, uh, a transporter, a freight forwarder, a carrier, a supplier, uh, and, and, and so on. So we, one of the things that we realized was that uh, a lot of our containers were being offloaded on the warehouse. So it went out of my radar of being uh, cleared out of port, but then the transporter uh, was not returning the containers on time uh, for whatever reason at their part, but we were able to identify this by having an alert on the detention separate than the damage itself. Uh, this is one uh, other example, and uh, we, we were able to eliminate 
the waiting charges uh, because uh, what are usually paid to the transporter because we have a very clear arrival plan. This plan is shared with the warehouse and they are very well aware and, and can prepare their manpower. So this is exactly the visibility that we are giving to our finance department so they can prepare uh, uh, customs duty payments. Uh, we give it to our warehouse so they can plan their manpower. So it's, it's something that flows down the supply chain. Uh, one other example is uh, the reduction of headcount. So um, this monitoring of shipments and shipment updates requires people and entry and, and a lot of effort actually. So when it's automated and uh, even Ocean Insight has the feature for an API integration into your ERP, so these shipment updates can uh, flow straight into your uh, purchase order maybe or something like that. Uh, one of the last examples on uh, saving cost is uh, the on-time clearance for containers that were arriving before ETA. And surprisingly, this is something that really happens a lot in this time when there is uh, COVID-19, a lot of blank sailing. Uh, one of two things happens. It's either you were lucky enough to be on the vessel and you would be arriving early because the vessel has skipped some ports or you were not lucky and you missed the vessel because there was a blank sailing. So. In, in the first scenario, you end up coming early one week. So a lot of, a lot of ports, uh, like the ones in Saudi, they only give you five days. And the, the fine is very hefty after these five days. So once we realized that the container came, and, and in some situations it came 14 days early. So 14 days uh, we would have uh, had, from the day we thought that the container is arriving, we would have had already seven days of, of fines. And it helped us to start uh, the clearance on time. Um, Thanks a lot, Ismail. Um, great answer. I mean, very detailed, very in-depth. I got a text that came in. Um, I think it's a bit tongue-in-cheek, but you know, with all these um, capabilities that Ocean Insights is giving to Goody, right? What did Goody do before it had Ocean Insights? Well, <laughs> that wouldn't be nice to <laughs> Uh, to be honest, it really depended on, uh, again, uh, the customs broker on, inside the port, uh, and manual reports, uh, waiting for one day and, and sending reminders, please send me the report, please send me the report. And uh, we had a lot of uh, times where even the customs broker did not know that the shipment is in port because we didn't give them the document because it's coming after two weeks. Right. So this is what happened. and. Uh, uh, it was uh, an Excel-based tracking. Uh, there was uh, a lot of uh, room for error in terms of deleting a row, um, um, overwriting a wrong cell, and such things. And especially when you depend on one source of information, which is the carrier update, and sometimes it's a bit biased. But when you have uh, the, the sources of information is from uh, AIS data, from satellite and uh, carrier and all, so it really uh, gives you very solid data. Okay, so it was a very manual process. You relied on your customs broker, your freight forwarder, and you use Excel spreadsheet. And you're absolutely correct. It's quite um, surprising that shipping lines even today cannot give you accurate vessel arrival times or departure times. And so there's a lot of inaccuracy, right? Um, here's another question. When you talked about, you mentioned, I think, headcount reduction. So, you know, this is a common fear or worry uh, and people talk about it quite often. Um, you know, when you introduce technology or digitalization or digitization in your supply chain, you're going to have people made redundant or put out of a job. So what happened in the case of Goody? What um, did you do with that headcount? Did you redeploy them? Um, did they go into higher value added jobs or did they simply get fired? What happened? That's an excellent question, to be honest, because I personally, um, um, uh, when I started, I said the goody purpose is to empower people to amaze. So people are employees. So um, it, the purpose is never to uh, uh, let go of employees, but it's, a, it's really, it eliminates unnecessary and wasted uh, effort of employees. So uh, today it, our employees are spending, that we do have the same, we did not let go of anyone. We just let them spend on more value adding. So today we can uh, expedite shipments, for example. We realize that there are uh, situations we were able to get a faster connection. I know exactly where is the container, and I know that there is a sailing from that port uh, 
earlier than the one that's scheduled with the carrier. So I get in contact with them. So these things were not happening. We were very reactive. Today we're very proactive. It's a competitive edge to the company. So it's not about letting go of people. It's never the purpose. It's just about uh, investing your right, your time in the right places. Right. Thanks. Thanks for that, Ismail. I think it's a very important message to send. Yeah. Um, you know, it's actually allowing or empowering our employees to do better at their jobs. And very often, especially in supply chain, it's not that you've got 200 people lining up at the door to do a job. Very often, it's very hard to find good people. So if you're good, um, the technology just makes you better and empowers you to do your role. We've just got a question that's come in. Um, and I guess it's a question that a lot of our listeners uh, or participants will ask. And this is one for Husseini. Um, sure. And I don't know if you saw the question as well. How does Ocean Insight charge for this visibility? Is it a SaaS model? Is it uh, pay me one dollar? You know, <clears throat> tell us a bit about the charging model. Sure, sure. I think um, uh, it, it is definitely a SaaS model, um, and and it's pretty transparent. I think unlike the the uh, the previous and historical solutions, which used to chart based on the the number of notifications that gives you it's not like that uh, we we define a per container cost uh, uh, that is that will be built if we start tracking that container for you it's as simple as that so so you know in next year you're going to track like uh, 10000 containers so you straight away know what is your cost it, it is there is no x factor in this yeah i mean you 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 can definitely in always in a, a budget for a fixed cost because you know how many containers you move and you know you are only going to pay per container. And then the container can go on for the journey of 15 days or 90 days. Uh, it doesn't affect your cost. Neither the, the number of uh, uh, alerts that we sent uh, for that container would change cost uh, anyways. So, so basically it's a fixed per container cost and that's, that's pretty transparent for our customers. Yeah. Okay, so basically, I tell you at the start of the year, this is what my projected volume is going to be. I don't know, 5,000 TEUs, 10,000 TEUs. And then we right. agree on a price for that with Ocean Insights. Yes? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And then, of yeah. course, there's a bit, a slight margin of error because no one actually hits the nail on the head. You know, Absolutely. it might be plus, minus 5, 10%, that sort of thing. Absolutely. I think, I think yeah, we, we do understand the, the practicalities. We understand the challenges uh, uh, that industry throws at you every year, and like like for example, this year right, it's 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 the most abnormal year, right? And we understand uh, uh, a lot of things. And and generally, when we work with uh, our customers on commercials, we we keep in those variable factors and ensure those uh, flexibilities to uh, to our customers. Yeah. So let me put you on the spot a bit. Um, so does that mean that if my volumes have dropped this year, say I committed to you 10,000 TEUs, you know, this is yeah. what my volume is going to be, but because of the circumstances that I'm in, I'm only shipping 5,000 TEUs. Are you yeah. saying that um, Ocean Insights is going to charge the customer based on 5,000? So, so what, we, what we, we do two things. Uh, 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 point number one is we look at the, the, the total volume, the annual volume that customer uh, would run every year. Like they can go back to three years and say, hey, this is the minimum that we run. And then uh, when we start talking about our minimum, the minimum commitment is always lesser than the commitment that customer feels is my minimum. Yeah, so that's where we, uh, we allow our customers to play and not just that understand that the, the the preferential pricing will be based on the actual potential but the minimum will be lesser than that to allow that flexibility and then um the the another flexibility is like these volumes are not not fixed uh, these minimum well volumes are not fixed for a month or for a quarter you have 12 months and 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 then your your volume can spread across so maybe three months because of pandemic, your, your volumes go down. But the moment the world is back to normal, you, you plunge into huge volume. Mm, and eventually, the, the whole year is, uh, is spread as well. Yeah. No, and your answer makes perfect sense. You know, a lot of people are talking about carriers overcharging now. Because most carriers, especially on the Trans-Pacific eastbound route, 
uh, rates are going through the roof, right? Uh, right? But you can't blame carriers because it's so hard to gauge demand. Uh, they are responding to market demand. Um, and you need to be fair when you actually approach the market. You know, we can't always keep reducing prices. We need to charge a fair prices, fair price for our business to continue being viable. Thanks a lot, Husseini. Um, sure. Bob, back to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you for the questions. So um, I know that for shippers, um, there's a lot of software solutions out there in the supply chain space, uh, planning, scheduling, WMS, TMS, and we also have limited IT budget. So Ismail, why, why did you make the provision of ocean freight visibility a priority for you at Goody? Yeah. Again, that's a, it's an excellent question. We, um, uh, at that time, we were having uh, an implementation of uh, SAP uh, ERP. And we had our own, before that, we had our in-house built ERP, which was uh, uh, perfectly uh, tailored for us. Uh, during that transition, a lot of uh, companies uh, go through that transition and they lose that visibility because uh, everyone is used on a certain process. Uh, so we ended up uh, expediting the implementation of the, of the project, uh, which from start, from the day we started talking with Ocean Insight till the day it was fully live and uh, all our shipments were on tracking, it took us exactly three months, inclusive of anything internal contract reviews and all of that. Uh, for us, uh, it was uh, a very important investment because um, as you can see here from indirect costs, this is only an estimation of what I was able to actually quantify. Uh, mm. Trust me, there were things that I, I wasn't able to quantify, so it's even more than uh, the numbers that you can see. Mm. So within the day, seven months of implementation, the value creation interventions, the ones that I were talking about how uh, we were able to capitalize on sales and similar, it's around 7,000% ROI. And that's in mm. seven months. And, uh, again, from direct cost uh, from uh, damage 595, this is by identifying the containers that were coming earlier. Uh, there were a few incidents that we realized the container was in port and the clearance did not start because of a miscommunication across the supply chain, which is bound to happen. Mm. So I wasn't able to quantify that because I don't know, it might have stayed for three months in the port. I, don't, I, I, mm. I cannot, that's why I couldn't quantify it. Then there's the detention. Uh, from uh, again realizing the containers that were uh, uh, not returned back to the depot after uh, offloading, so that's a mm. thousand. So mm. um, in seven months, the ten thousand percent ROI is, is quite the right investment. Mm. Really. Okay, so Husseini, I'm sure this is a question you get from your clients, your prospective clients, and do you, do you help them with these, these kinds of ROI calculations? Uh, absolutely. I think it, this is a very interesting question and I think uh, Bob and Raymond, you can have another webinar running for 60 minutes and we can talk about this. Yeah, <laughs> it's an interesting topic. I, I mean, yeah, I, the, there, there are two major factors that all of our customers uh, uh, or, or anybody would consider before they, they make the decision to invest. Uh, um, the the uh, factor number one, which is more important is what is the burning need for your organization? And if you are the organization who is for, for whom the, the ocean freight is core and integral part of your business, then, then definitely uh, having a visibility is uh, a critical need. Having a visibility is burning need for you. So, uh, you know, you need to decide what is your, your burning need now. And like Ismail said, the, 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 the second important factor is uh, uh, return over your invest. So on your, you have, everyone has a limited budgets, right? You have 10 applications, you want to implement all of them. And, and eventually you create a business case in front of your management and say, hey, I want to buy 10. And you know, you can only buy five, right? So, so that's where I think uh, comes the uh, ROI calculation. And we do help, uh, based on our experience with, uh, with, with uh, uh, our customers, we do help our customers to uh, uh, put some numbers behind it. So um, I know uh, our customers say that uh, their ROI is like uh, anywhere from two times or five times or seven times or even 10 times of uh, their investment in the first year with Ocean Insights. So I think if you are creating a business case, uh, putting across the, the management panel 
uh, the steering committee, then I think ROI is the factor that impresses everybody. So, and 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 that is a very important factor to talk about when you're buying, when you are making a buying decision. If, if I yeah. may add also, uh, it's not just a matter of ROI in terms of an absolute value, it is really a fraction of what a container would cost. So for any company that's moving uh, as an absolute, it's not really that significant. Right, okay. Because in your case, your intangible benefits, if you like, 7,000% you calculated, which was actually more than the tangible benefits uh, uh, are good. Uh, that's oh. always the case in, in yeah. supply chain. The, the yeah. indirect costs are always higher. Mm. Okay. Ismail, uh, you, you touched on this uh, issue earlier of COVID-19. Um, and that's obviously the big story this year affecting all businesses all over the all over the world. But um, specifically, how has COVID-19 affected uh, Goody uh, this year? In a good way or in a bad way? Or? Uh, for everything, there's an upside, I would say. So, um, yes, we did have higher sales and obviously higher revenue because uh, the change and shift in, in consumer demand. Uh, a lot of people, especially for, for us, uh, our products are uh, dry food stuff generally. So it's things that you use in your kitchen, in your home. So people being on a lockdown was uh, uh, really shifted from restaurant demand and all of uh, con con this kind of cons mm. consumption into the household and domestic uh, consumption. So <clears throat> Well, that's good news, if this yeah. comes to <laughs> bad news. So for the supply chain, uh, that was a very volatile demand. So uh, I know it's, it's, it's great to have higher sales, but when you're not able to put the product on shelf, that's not good news anymore. You start losing mm -hmm. market share, so it's something that's very important. Uh, so we had very volatile demand. We had uh, higher shipping costs because a lot of... Uh, uh, blank sailing happening so the capacity of uh, the shipping lines were, were reduced uh, we had uh, e equipment shortage in a lot of because what happened uh, throughout the year there was an imbalance of, uh, of trade of containers some containers there were stuck in China and uh, obviously uh, there were very mm -hmm. limited containers in, in US and North uh, Europe which caused uh, us to have a higher shipping cost uh, we had obviously a lot of disruptions in terms of on time uh, and in transit uh, kind of uh, times. Uh, one of the things was uh, obviously the clearance itself at port. Um, you couldn't have them as uh, the same presence uh, in port and the reduction of, of employees, uh, changes in a lot of uh, documentation. So it, it did have an impact across the entire supply chain in every way possible. Right. But, Right. There was a good, uh, balance to it, which was the higher sales. Okay, good. Uh, uh, for you, Husseini, did you find that the crisis had more people knocking on, on your door, looking for this visibility? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, 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 you know, uh, definitely uh, the uh, some of the unprecedented events, and uh, the world is uh, affected. Uh, businesses equally the personal life, so. It's definitely difficult times. You, you, you work in an industry, you make friends, you know people, you know professional, you talk about it. Uh, you get to hear those difficult uh, uh, decisions like uh, big projects being uh, shelved or budget cuts or agreements being put on hold and stuff like those. But I think for, for us at, at Ocean Insights, uh, uh, good thing that happened is that we did not receive uh, any cancellation from uh, our existing customers. That, that was a kind of a revelation and that was a kind of uh, an interesting fact that you know the general notion uh, amongst the industry is that uh, visibility is, is the solution which is good to have. Uh, I think this was the scenario before the, the pandemic, but now I think uh, that has made a shift and, and, uh, uh, and for us it's, a, it's definitely a good shift, it's a positive shift where people now feel uh, that uh, uh, the visibility is is very critical part of it. So I think even during the COVID, we, we understood from some of our existing customers, uh, uh, mainly forwarders, so they anticipated once the, the world is uh, will come over this situation, there will be a huge strain on the industry, huge demand for the industry. And that that is the time if you do not have a visibility, then, then you, you'll end up in a lot of issues. 
So a lot of them during this difficult time were looking in the future, trying to anticipate what will happen and trying to see how, uh, you know, uh, the technology can, can help them in, in even more difficult times uh, coming in the future. And, and I think Ocean Insights also ran some, uh, um, some surveys and uh, we, we got to hear that I think 40 to 60% of the participant felt that their supply chain is susceptible. They need technology. They need uh, new solutions to make sure that they can withstand uh, uh, these kind of uh, events. And they all thought that uh, they need to create like more resilience uh, in, their, in their business processes. And I think uh, technology enablement can only uh, help to create those uh, uh, resilience in your, in your business processes. So yeah, uh, okay. overall, of course, bad for everyone. Uh, but I think uh, we learned that uh, eventually uh, the application which was good to have is now like uh, in, the, in the kitty of uh, those must to have applications. Yeah. All right. So Hiseni, you, you touched about this, you touched on this briefly. Uh, so we've heard from Goody. So that's the shipper's perspective, yeah, or the BCO's perspective. Yeah. How is um, Ocean Insights helping other stakeholders in the supply chain ecosystem? You mentioned forwarders a few seconds ago. How is yeah. OI, Ocean Insights, helping freight forwarders? Yeah. I think forwarders is, is our uh, sec second biggest vertical uh, uh, from where we, we, we get our customers. Uh, predominantly, forwarders have uh, two perspectives. Uh, the perspective number one is the customer service. They want to delight their customers uh, with the uh, you know, uh, technology and the services that uh, uh, the others are not offering. After all, it, it is a service industry. Yeah? You, you, are, you are in competition and you need to have, uh, uh, have an edge over the others. So I think that drives a lot of forwarders to um, uh, you know, reach out to us, uh, have our data into their customer facing portals. And I think in, in recent trends, we have a lot of, uh, 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 you know, e-market solutions for freight, or you have a lot of e-freight forwarders coming in. I think for them, uh, uh, they have everything digitalized, right? And they need the data. And that's where uh, uh, Ocean Insight plays a very important role because I think our data are more reliable and, and they are basically creating an ecosystem where they uh, plug in uh, a plug and play solution. They don't want to reinvent wheels. They just want solutions which are proven, tested, working, and then they, they plug it and create an ecosystem for the end users. So for them, it was important. And, 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 and also we see uh, some interesting trends where uh, uh, TMS and ERP systems, they, they started thinking to have an integration at product level. I mean, some of the TMS systems would thought uh, these are the integrations that, that, that needs to be defined at the uh, customer levels. But then I think now there is a shift and they think uh, it is a win-win situation if such integration happens at the product level. So once it is integrated in, let's say for example, uh, SAP or Oracle TMS at product level, then everyone has this information on single screen. Uh, they have an easy access to that. So, so that's an interesting uh, uh, you know, story for us. And uh, we've been also um, approached by, uh, I think some of the banking and financial institution. Every, yeah, everybody is into digitalization, right? They want to digitalize their, their, their processes. So, uh, you know, one of the one of the banking industry they they came because they they are digitalizing their uh, uh, you know shipments that go through uh, bank uh, letter of credits, and mm -hmm. there I think they need a, a visibility. What is the actual sailing date? When did the container actually arrived at the port? These are some of the important milestones uh, that generally sometimes you miss from the 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 core sources of data, and that's where Ocean Insight would go to third party neutral sources receive those information and feed in and say hey your 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 sailing started on this date or you arrived at destination on that date and these are this would trigger some of the financial transactions like when to generate invoice when to send documents or when to go for the clearance at the port how much duty payment i would need next week yeah all these questions are being answered if you have those uh, those data and and also right. we have been approached by i think um, 
uh, government bo bodies um, for, for having some visibilities. And, and the last point I want to make is uh, uh, for, for the industry at large, uh, Ocean Insight um, frequently uh, generates some market intelligent reports. Uh, you heard Ismail talking about blank sailings a lot. Uh, people working at uh, uh, level zero, I think generally in normal uh, times, they, they know by heart uh, X vessel is coming on Wednesday, Y vessel is departing on, on Thursday. They know this by heart, but these are uh, by no standard, these are normal times, right? And, and anticipating whether that vessel will come or not was very difficult. So what we did is we, we at Ocean Insight, we compared uh, the, the services, the, the vessel services that uh, carriers offer every week. And those comparisons would tell us that that carrier, that vessel is uh, 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 not offering the service uh, next week. So that is a blank sailing. So, so, so our customers like Ismail would know at Dubai port that X vessel generally comes on Wednesday, but it's not going to come next Wednesday. So those kind of reports would also help. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So thanks for that. We're sure. out of time, but I'm going to ask you guys a couple of other questions. Yeah. Um, for Ismail, so I think I saw in one of your slides that it took about three months to implement Ocean Insights in your organization. How long did it take you to decide? That means from the time your, your organization decided that they need some sort of container tracking or visibility tool, how long did it take you from the time you realized that to the time you actually decided on a vendor? Well, um, let me share a little bit of a personal story. So I, uh, I was, um, May 2019, I was only taking care of, of international markets. I wasn't really taking care of Saudi. And I got the assignment in May uh, 2019 to look into. So the first thing, the question that I uh, was talking actually with top management, they were saying we want the bet uh, better visibility. We want better visibility. That was really the main objective. Right. So from, from May, I started looking around in the market. I saw a couple of uh, uh, solutions. And as I've already mentioned, uh, I got in contact on in November, mid-November with uh, Husseini. Um, I've already seen a lot of solutions uh, and I, I knew right away that this is uh, the solution for us. And uh, as I said, it took uh, less than a week for them to set up the account. Uh, and and uh, the, maybe internally the contract review was the biggest part. If if I would have eliminated the whole project, it would take less than a month to implement. All right, fantastic. Thanks for that. Um, so of course price is important. We won't discount that. But very quickly, um, what were the top three reasons why you chose Ocean Insight, or why did Ocean Insights make sense? That's an amazing question, honestly. <clears throat> but keep it short. Three, three reasons, answer in less than a minute. So um, first of all, I, I knew right away that the ROI would be uh, great um, without any, you know, right now we can see that. This is one thing. Uh, second thing was uh, the features on Ocean Insight, the automated reports when it comes to uh, lead time report. It's, it's an automated report, so I knew how much time it would save us. And finally, how it's the only platform that I saw that is integrated across different sources. So uh, getting that uh, made me very confident with the data that it gives out. All right. Thank you very much. Um, one last question for you before I... Uh, so you can consider this your wrap-up question. What's next for Ismail and Goody? So you've got Ocean Insights. Um, you've got this great visibility. You've got huge reduction in demerge and detention costs. What's your next project that you're going to be working on to improve your supply chain? Um, it's quite clear for us that we are, uh, so as I already mentioned, there's the API integration. So uh, the, the API documentation is very solid uh, in Ocean Insight. It's just that we're trying to work out the, the details on how and which fields to integrate into our ERP. So this is the project that we're working on. Uh, and on, on a parallel uh, part, we are also working into uh, uh, having the visibility on an SKU level, which is very important. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, and for yourself, Husseini, to wrap up, you know, you've got a resounding endorsement from Goody here, 7,000% ROI. Yeah? Um, so yeah. 
Fantastic. So why, why aren't people not lining up around the block to sign up for Ocean Insights? What's your takeaway message for them? Yeah, I think, uh, I, I think um, people who, who talk to us, uh, they definitely know uh, that the, the solution works. They know the ROI is there. Uh, there are some, uh, some external factors uh, which takes time uh, to make decisions. So I think, I think uh, uh, in my tenure at Ocean Insights, I have seen companies uh, talking to us for five years and they sign, sign up in the fifth year. Uh, and, and I think some of the external factors recently, like, like the pandemic, have, uh, have expedited uh, some of these decisions. And like I said, some of, some of our prospects were really smart, looking into the future and see uh, um, you know, what's going to happen next and what, what will be the next biggest challenge for them. And, and then creating their roadmap accordingly, what technology they would need and stuff like that. So I would, I would say, hey, um, uh, um, you know, if you are the company, uh, again, uh, shipping something with Ocean, then uh, visibility is, is, is no brainer. Uh, uh, and, and then the important aspect is uh, the reliability and the quality of the data that, uh, that you really uh, you know, uh, get from the solution provider. Yeah. Great. Thank That's you very it. much, Hussein. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And I, um, I, I realize we are now out of, out of time. So I really want to thank our two guests this morning from India and Dubai who helped us explore and illuminate this topic of ocean freight visibility. So that's Hussein Evora from Ocean Insights and Mohammed Ismail from Goody. Of course, yeah. I also want to thank uh, um, my co host today, uh, Ramon Krishnan. And um, you are there, our audience and participants. So there will be a recording made available of this webinar. So look out for that and also look out for future Logisim webinars. So thank you very much again and goodbye. Thanks a lot, Bob. Goodbye. goodbye.